My wife, Rebecca, is slightly eccentric, and I knew this when I married her. At the time, those little eccentricities of hers were adorable, and she joked that they came with the territory of her being an artist. For instance, she was always barefoot in the cold of winter. She said the shoes constrained her. She liked to collect bird feeders and grow a plethora of her own vegetables. This would be fine had she not been living in an apartment. She had fresh herbs growing on her kitchen windowsill. She was growing nightshade and mugwort inside of her living room, a tomato plant, and small lemon tree, and had lived in the bedroom. She also loved collecting old medical books, some of which were very rare, but you can imagine how heavy these were to cart to our brand new house after we moved in together. We've been married for five years now. She's estranged from her family, but my wife had dozens of friends, all as strange and as lovely as her. Every single one an artist of some sort has worked because we're opposites. Where I'm meticulous, tidy, and a little boring as a chartered accountant, she's untidy but highly colorful as a person. Rebecca is also the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, magazine covers included. Long, flowing dark hair to her waist, big brown eyes, and high cheekbones. The thing I love most about her, though, is her innate goodness. She has a kind word for everyone and is naturally a very sweet-natured person. I know I lucked out big time with her. We've been blissfully happy in our little house, where she paints portraits of a loyal customer base, and I run my small business as an accountant. Things would continue to be blissfully happy even now, had she not started working on this sudden and strange new project. It started three months ago. We were about to go to bed when I noticed the flash of gold on her wrist. Rebecca doesn't wear jewelry usually, as she says it gets in the way of her painting, and I thought that it was strange that she was wearing a bracelet. What is that? I asked. Genuinely interested as she brushed her long hair out at her mirror, as she did every night. The thin gold bracelet glittered as her hand moved. She turned to look at me, her brows furrowed slightly. What's what? I pointed at the bracelet. She looked at her arm. Oh, yes, this. I'm painting a new client, and she just gave it to me. Isn't it nice? Rebecca smiled and raised it so I could see it better. And it was more than just nice. It was expensive. It looked like a Tiffany's bracelet. I chose my next words very carefully. Is this client a good friend, too? She shook her head. First timer. She said it would make me feel better if I took it, as it would establish a more personal bond than client and painter. I must have frowned at this, because she added, It's really not odd for clients to give me presents, or for me to get them little presents, too. I spend hours and days painting them, and it establishes a sort of camaraderie. It was true that she had both received jewelry and given gifts, but they were mere bottles of wine, plants, and chocolates. Never jewelry. But it was late, and we both had an early start tomorrow. I simply nodded and decided to let it go. The next day, as we were eating dinner, I noticed the silver bangle on her other arm. I put my fork full of rice and chicken into my mouth as I watched the bangle glitter. Another gift from your client? I asked as I chewed away. She looked up at me, and for a split second, I thought I saw something flit across her face. Strange expression. One that I'd never seen before. She nodded and kept eating, changing the subject to an exhibition she was hoping to go into the city and see with a friend. I'm not a jealous man. I mean, I love and I trust my wife implicitly. But the fact that she was getting jewelry from an unknown person was unnerving me. Can I meet this client of yours? I asked her, trying to keep my tone conversational. It mustn't have been conversational enough, because I've never seen my wife's mood change so fast. Absolutely not, Jackson. I don't ask to meet your clients, do I? Her words were harsh and frustrated, and so unlike her. My clients don't give me expensive jewelry as presents, I retorted before I could stop myself. I could see the color rising in her cheeks at this. I'm working on a brand new series of portraits, and it's going to be my best work yet. I would appreciate that you support me through this, instead of trying to intrude. 
I've already had interest from the National Gallery. Well, this was all news to me. Rebecca always shared her work and her ideas with me. It was unlike her to be secretive. I immediately pushed aside my misgivings about the jewelry and nodded in contrition. Of course, you have my support. Always. I'm so proud that you got the National Gallery interested in your work. We should go out and celebrate. I saw her melt slowly at this. A hesitant smile replacing the anger on her face. She took a sip of her wine. It's only interest as of yet. I don't know if they'll take the paintings. This is where I should have pressed her about the project, but I didn't. God help me. I regret it deeply. The jewelry kept accumulating, and my wife's arm was covered in expensive bracelets soon, and Rebecca began to change too. She'd spent late hours inside her studio. I rarely saw her for meals. Some nights, she didn't even come to bed. When I did see her, she'd be muttering to herself. Words that I couldn't quite make out. One day, I saw her staring out of the kitchen window as though in a daze, staring off into the distance. Another day, I caught her doing this to a wall. Four days ago, I couldn't take it anymore. I needed to see what this was and why it was consuming her. Rebecca didn't like me in her studio. It was her sacred space. And for our entire marriage, I had respected it. That night, I waited until she had finally fallen asleep after three days of working non-stop in her studio, knowing she was out cold in our bed from exhaustion. I quietly walked outside the house into the garden to the studio that I had built for her as our first anniversary gift. He was massive, a white gazebo which had huge windows for natural light and summer breezes, but was also insulated for winter. But she had been keeping the curtains closed lately, which further confused me, and Rebecca loved working with natural light. She had a sofa and an armchair in there for her clients, lots of bookshelves with books on art, her plants, and of course, her easel and art supplies. I slowly placed the key into the shed door and I turned it. The door creaked open slowly, and I put my phone's flashlight on. I didn't want to risk putting the lights on in here. As I raised my foot and I stepped in, I grimaced at the sound of the creak. Luckily, I turned to look at the house to make sure our bedroom light was still off. It was. Breathing a small sigh of relief, I moved in and I shut the door behind me. The first thing I noticed was the smell. It smelled like rotten meat. Slowly, I gleamed the light into the room. I saw a series of large paintings, already framed in gold, ornate frames in the corner. I moved forward and took a closer look at them, and I tripped over hard. My phone fell with a clatter onto the floor, and I tumbled onto the floor with a thud. Wincing at the loud sounds, I groaned in pain and fumbled looking for my phone. When I got it in my hand, I rose, and I shone it in the direction of what had tripped me up. A severed head, still bleeding. I muffled a cry when I saw it and staggered backwards, and in doing so, the light lit up the floor. What met my eyes was a horrific sight. Strewn across the floor were more severed heads, limbs, torsos. Everything was so cleanly severed, as though a surgeon had done it. In my horror, I had noticed that the eyes of every single head were wide open, and each face had been perfectly made up. The hair was perfect, too. The expressions were all set in various forms of anguish, sorrow, as though frozen in their moment of death and decapitation. In a trance, I walked over to the paintings to look at what my wife had painted. She had left them facing the wall as though hiding their contents from the world. Trembling, I pulled the first one and laid it against the wall facing outwards so I could look at it. I wretched. It was a woman's severed head on a plate, held by her own decapitated body. I was about to leave that hideous studio and run when I noticed it. On the wrist of the decapitated woman in the painting was the first bracelet I saw my wife wearing. Waves to nausea and fury took over me as I finally completely recognized what was happening. My wife was a serial killer. Those bracelets were her her mementos. Unable to stay a second longer, I ran out of the studio straight to the bedroom and I threw up. This was 
This was four days ago. Today I was sitting at the table watching my wife wash the dishes, the bracelets jingling on her arm like a series of quiet death knells. I hadn't been able to sleep or eat since I learned of what was in that studio, what she was doing. I never turn my back when she's around, only watch her carefully. I've been debating going to the police. But I'm afraid what she might do. What she's willing to do to finish this project. Fear has taken over my once blissful life, but nothing, nothing made my blood run cold more than what she said to me this morning. This morning, as she placed my coffee before me, she said, Darling, I just realized I've never painted you. She smiled an odd smile as she sipped her coffee, looking into my eyes. I should paint you soon. I think she knows. What am I going to do? Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Cube Pasta. I want to tell you thank you so much for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to today's episode of the podcast on the podcast. For those of you guys who like listening to me here, maybe you like listening to me do behind the scenes shit uh, stuff. You can always do that at twitch.tv slash MrCreepyPasta. I Twitch stream sometimes, and when I Twitch stream, it's usually either playing very random video games or doing work like you're currently hearing me do right now. I always love seeing you guys. I always love hearing from you guys. So if you wanted to pop in and listen to me work or pop in and backseat game, then hey, you're always welcome to do so. I always appreciate a follow there. And of course, like always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta. You guys, as always, are the main MVPs of this story, of every night's story, and you guys help me keep the lights on here. So, without further ado, I want to give a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tanya Oren, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, That One Guy, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Rebecca Harper, Murky Moo, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Caddo Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Chaos Art, Cryolinium, Milk and Meal, Zachary Grafius, Gorang Tramagasy, Maria Walker, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, Guy Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Croconut 509, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Tuji Campbell, Trickin, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zaccardi, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiwi the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Guy Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so very, very much. Thank all of you who are in the description down below, and honestly, thank all of you that can give anything, even when it comes down to just $1. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Sweet dreams. <laughs>